The effect Binance is having on the economy is so much. Why? Because people are coming to the Binance markets not because they want to make some kind of financial arrangement. We now have gamblers. Once that Binance thing was shut down, Zoom it started coming down. Every day, within a day, three times it was going. That's because the online market was real. A 14 years old boy is calling on his room, can pick up his phone and say, pounds by dollar with a amount of money. People are toying around with prices. Once someone finds out you need something, they put a price on it. Because you need it, you're probably going to have to pay for it. Greediness from sellers is also... I don't think it's greed. It's, 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 it's not greed. So the greed from traders alone, the greed of traders is one of the things that have gotten us to this stage right now. If you say the traders are greedy, they, they, they just didn't start their greed today. That greed has always been there. I have men in my area that when, when I get there, when I want to buy something, they will tell you that you want to talk to you, just say this. I only have one today. What that one will sell for me for 1,000 naira? He tell them, ah, dollar news, 4,000 naira. The economy is better today than when my parents were my age. If you agree with this prompt, please step forward. Whether we like it or not, the economy of the world today is certainly much better than it was 30, 50, 80 years ago. It's inevitable that prices will rise generally over time. The aim, however, is to let this, or rather the preferred rise is when it's a slow rise, it's not too sharp, okay? When it's too sharp, we start talking about inflation, suddenly the money in your pocket cannot buy what it used to buy. Right. And, and that's generally one doesn't like. But whenever inflation happens, you find that there are adjustments and eventually there will be affordability. When petrol went up from 70 cowboy liter to a bit over a hundred, and then it went up to seven naira and all those rises, each time there was an increase in the pump price of petrol, there was always a complaint and it was, oh, we can't afford it. People will park their car. But eventually prices adjusted and affordability came in. My name is Adeboega Adebajo. I'm a financial consultant and a business strategist. When we're talking of inflation, no doubt costs are going to go up. And the natural or expected human behavior is that people will start to adjust they look for substitutes, they look for alternatives. So, things will change. Would the disagreeance be step forward? From, from whatever I've said, I want, I want us to be very careful of points here. You know, I spoke about the growth and development. We're speaking about economy. When we begin to speak about better economy, we want to check the ratio of way things are being done financially then to now. I remember when my dad yeah, when my dad works, when he comes back home and he collects his salary, everybody at home is happy. Because we'll do everything at home, we'll pay our rent, and we still have excess. But now, a lot of things is going up geometrically, and the income, what is coming out from the government to the people, <coughs> is not measuring up to the standard. And I think we need to be careful. So, when, when we begin to speak of economy then, what comes into you, and the rate at which you'll use it to balance it, things up around your standard of living then, you still have something to save. But now, what comes into your pocket? You can't even, even save. I'm Moshoto Kuala Adegoke. I'm an academic specialist and I'm also into IT. When you look at the government from their reactions and the role they play, we can actually say that these guys don't even care about us because no government is going to be concerned about the way his economy is. Nigeria government, from what me I can see, they don't, they don't basically care because I don't know why you're going to increase the price of school fees 120%. At that same time, fuel price increases. At that same time, subsidy on, on electricity was removed and the government is not even coming to address the hardship. Okay, so let me also speak on that. I have listened to the speakers that agree and it's quite interesting that um, they say the economy is better than it's better now than it was then. I don't know, I wasn't born then, but I'm born now. So <laughs> I can speak based on facts, the you know, figures that we have then. So what makes an economy good actually? Is it about um, the rules you see? The technology that that, that, that that we see. Let's look at Nigeria as, as just a case study. Well, whenever pump price goes up, I mean, the speaker said the affordability comes in at a point. Mm -hmm. I don't think that is true. People have parked their cars. People now join hands together. One person drives a car. Four people now enters. Is that affordable? Is that affordable? They have just adjusted. What has happened? 
lives are tougher now. I know how many people depend on me now, friends that we grow up together, now keep calling you every now and then, depending on you asking you for this. They're also working. They're not lazy people. So because people, it is basically because corruption has actually, has, in Nigeria, let's, let's look at Nigeria just as a it's country. Let's, don't let us look at um, the other, 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 other countries. So for me, as far as I'm concerned, per capita income has dropped badly. It is worse. Some of it has dropped significantly. You can no longer even live. People no longer eat. It's now one zero, one, one zero one or one or zero zero one. I remember there was a time, uh, I think when I was in 200 level, I came back on school and uh, my dad was talking with a family friend and he was saying, these children, when they go to school, all, all they eat now in school is just beans, beans, beans. So when they went to school, at least if you open their cupboard, you see sardine and all, all those kind of things. People cannot afford things like milk and sardine. And those, those are basic stuff. It's not something luxurious, but a lot of people cannot afford it. But if you might find out that their income is 150,000, but they can't afford those basic stuff. And the issue there is, the issue is, what, what has actually caused the majority of these things is the pressure on this economy. During our father's time, the people that want to embezzle money, they are not much. Yes, you just speak Babagi that one or two, all those old old, old men then. But now, if you see a governor, the wife of the governor is planning on the way to actually get her own out of it. The children, the friend of the children, the wife of the children. So this is it. When, when we begin to speak about the economy, we want to measure the economy of your country. You need to measure the uh, you need to measure that country based on the way people are living. Why do people run to that country? When they go to that country, it's not as if they are making luxurious money. But if, if you see a barman in the United States, he has a house. What is he getting from the bar as a barman? He can actually fix up his family. Okay, I, 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 I hear you all, but let's look at the economy. Why I said what you said is real is because it's out there in the streets. Yeah. But that relates to what I was saying. There are times when you get into the adjustment period. It is never an easy period. And that's why I use the petrol pump price. True. You can probably say right now, people have parked their cars. You now have three, four people in a car. No, it happened before. It happened before the first time petrol prices went up by about 150%. It happened. And what eventually happened? There was an adjustment. Incomes would never, ever rise as quickly as prices rise. If that happens, you're going to have hyperinflation. So what we need to bear in mind is that we're going through an adjustment period. It is going to be tough. At the end of the day, affordability becomes key and we will get there. But what is important is that, and why we're all feeling this, is that incomes need to catch up. I am worried about my day-to-day -day living expenses. If you agree with this problem, please step forward. So, um, you're probably surprised that uh, some of us are here. We said we agree the economy today is better than it was yesterday. And we're here saying <laughs> you're worried. we're worried about our living expenses. Just uh, yesterday, I found out that the price of petrol per litre in a station in Ikorodu is the same price I'm buying petrol per liter in Abuja. Meanwhile, there's supposed to be a difference yes. in that Lagos state is supposed to be lower yeah, than Abuja, Abuja that's in the north, uh -huh. you know, middle belt area of Nigeria. And, and so it, it tells you something that people are toying around with prices and we tend to have a situation where once someone finds out you need something, they put a price on it because you need it. You're probably going to have to pay for it. I used to buy Greek for my children when they go into school. Uh, then I was I started buying at, I think at the price of a hundred eight hundred or so. Now it's three five for a pack. I stopped buying. Grapes. Yeah, I stopped buying. <laughs> Lucky children. <laughs> I stopped buying, and they were and they kept asking me that what happened. I can't afford it any longer. And they don't understand the meaning of affordability. You can't afford it. Sometimes they see you with money. <laughs> they see plenty of money, but it's not plenty of money. It has no value. Right. But I do say to people, it calls for you to, to, to sit back and adjust what, what you spend money. Some of those things are waste, actually. Why would you sit in, 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 a, in a, an SUV, drive from here to Marina, when you have other colleagues who are also going the same way? Call yourself together. It, it's no shame. Just tell yourself, guys, let's use one car. Let's all put these phones together. Efficiency. Yeah. So, so rather than taking four cars to Marina, you take one car, you all get there, you join together, you come back home and you are happy. I was speaking to a particular man, I think last month, and he said, it's not even worse in Nigeria. That there was a time in Brazil that they had three prices across the uh, opening price, the noon price and the evening price in Brazil. That if you, if you go to a shop in the morning, the price is different from 
known and it's different from evening to say how it was yeah it's, it's even exactly. yes it's happening yeah, now exactly. i think uh, a, a woman a woman told me something like that that she exactly. bought something in the morning yeah, she, went, to, I she went to buy again in the evening and i said the price has yes. increased so i could remember um earlier this month uh, i have a six-month-old son so i wanted to buy him formula than one so i went to the supermarket and got to saying i'll get it at two at the middle of the month and i got it at five thousand eight hundred and fifty naira for each Coming back two weeks after to that same supermarket, it has gone up to eight thousand for one. And my son, since he didn't do uh, baby friendly, he can't stay without eating, uh, taking his milk. And from when you're getting it, they said it's bound to go up again. So seeing that <laughs> you have to get this in every month and the price keeps going up, this that has been sold for eight thousand naira now. Six months ago, when I was born, it was four thousand six hundred naira. And within six months, the price has gotten That's this like a hundred percent increase in six so months. So it's so much. I'm worried about the price of things going up. It's affecting our disposable income, what we can spend from because it's as if we have money in our pockets, but they can't get what can meet your needs. So, yeah. So we are more worried because you don't know what before we can speculate. Oh, okay, if the price is going to be too much, maybe 15 hours. But now we don't know what we are going to meet because. There's not about increase. The increase is not uniform. Everybody is just putting price. Well, on I, I don't think people are just putting price. It's what we call cost boost inflation. Cost of production for most of these companies have increased, or for companies that import, importation costs have increased also. So I think that's what is uh, passing through to the uh, cost no, of goods no, we see what, on the streets. What, what, what I mean that. by that? What I mean by that is, let me give an instance. On the street, hmm? mm. you see somebody selling a milk, 200 naira. On that same street, you see somebody selling for 300. You see somebody selling for 350. Why? Because they just said they don't know. I asked my mom, how much you buy this? The man said, I've sold some months. But my friend said, when she went there today, to do some we don't know what we meet. So we need to sell on a higher price. So there is no regulation of price. Everything is just coming up. And that's why everybody needs to be more worried. That's why we are more worried about our detail. Every Nigeria are more worried. Every Nigeria are more worried. Everybody is just basing on maybe dollar or fair price. You know, sometimes when you go to a place, you tell them that, oh, I bought this yesterday at so a price, and when you get it, they tell you that no, so you know, with this, you will just think of it that oh, what I bought yesterday, then if I need to buy, I need to buy it in excess. So that if I come back today, there will not be increase of price again. My name is Adewali Atanda. I'm a driver. I work under a construction company. Inflation has really affected my business in a form that whereby you, whatever we are going to purchase at a particular price, when we get to the market and you see that oh, what you are getting here now is what is quite different from what you have get before. Like for instance, I have a salon that I operate also. This is a rechargeable clip of it, and then the price I got it before was not quite different from the one I'm getting now. We're looking at buyers now. What about the sellers? Like you said about prices over there. Now, what they're not doing, which is very unfair, you can't blame the government for it. And if I had to put a word to it, I would say it's economic sabotage. Mm -hmm. As vendors, I should be able to look at it that if I can sell bulk, then I can <coughs> buy mass, reduce my cost. Because instead of using one bus to bring three cartons down, I can bring 30 cartons down on that same trip and I'm yeah. still paying the same transport fare right. because I know that 30 cartons, there is this group of people or different groups that I've ordered and that I will supply to in bulk. That way, I still make my margins. But you see, the people selling are not thinking about this. And what you find is everybody just wants to say, oh, let me sell and make a, this kind of margin. Well, Unfortunately well, for them, that margin they make, they're going to spend it somewhere else. Somewhere somewhere else. else. I, I disagree with your point that you said that uh, what uh, the sellers or the traders are doing is unfair. To me, I think they are just adjusting also to the increases in price. Because if you look at importation cost, the cost of importing goods in this country is very high. The Nigeria Customs Service charges in dollars. Import duties are paid in dollars. They change it every time. If the, 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 the rate at the exchange, uh, the exchange rate increases, you see the exchange rate for import duty will also increase. So that, that's, that, that's so, it. So how does that affect the onions, tomatoes? Well, wait, wait, the, 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 onion seller, the onion seller has to, trans, has to take our goods it has to transport them, but and because the of problem. diesel, diesel, diesel that's usually used problem, to yeah. transport part goods from the, the north yeah. down south, sells for like a thousand four hundred. It's just recently that uh, Jamu Refinery is right. bringing it down to a thousand. So we have it's not even it's even more than a thousand. It's even more than a thousand. So you have wait, and the price of diesel has increased from like around let's say eight red naira. 
May last year Siege. to we like a thousand four hundred now. So this, see, those past truths we have on given instances. We need to be see. We need to be very straight and factual here. Greediness from sellers is also. I don't think it's greedy. Let me, let me, let me it land. It's not greedy. Let me let me land. See, let, let, let me give you an instance. I was I was in a boutique. I wanted to get a shirt, and the guy told me this shirt is eight thousand naira, and I was like eight thousand k, and we already bargaining to six thousand naira. Let me tell you something. Because for him to actually get to a stage of 6,000, 6,005, hmm, he has actually made his calculation. Because no seller wants to win at lost. No. He has actually made his calculation and he knows the profit he's, he's, making. he's going to make. So if he's not going to make profit, he was not going to come to that compromise. That, that yes, yes. Do you believe that I picked up three shares and feel oh good? That I felt so ever asked. I picked up three shares and I was packing and one guy just walked in. The guy is not even up to 14 years old. I just think 13 years old or 12 years old boy. But the guy is using a phone worth millions of naira. The very young boy. I got just working. I want this shit. The man said 25,000. Give me this. Give me this. <laughs> give me this. Give me this. All the clothes I picked on the table, the guy didn't know that I was actually, he thought maybe it was, it was still on display. The guy picked everything. Just imagine a price of 6,500. Please, mm -hmm. I, I have what I'm going to. A price of 6,500 to... 25,000. 25, That's what I was talking about with regulation. When you get to a store in the US, you don't ask somebody that how much is this? The price tag is there. Tag is there. So, so fantastic, which is what I was going to say that recently the FCCPC was saying that there is a need for people to display prices. Yes. And yes. I wonder why in Nigeria we never ever did. You can't tell me that you are not displaying price in your shop because you don't want me, your competitor, to know how much you are selling. Price display is not a problem. And I think yeah. rather than trying to regulate prices, yeah, yeah. we should have we should, price because display. Let me, because price price price. most times, most times, eh? Most times. Let me, let me give you an instance. I was, in fact, the people, the, the tribe I respect so much in Nigeria before that, they are these modest tribe going, they're ever going that way. <laughs> Which are the Northerners. Yeah, I feel, <laughs> when Northerners tell you the price, is that true? Northerners are ever going, well, I was, I was my friend and we're like, yeah, guys, I wanted to buy this suya because I have a bike man. Whenever I have any kind of um, work to do that's going to make me run around, I just call my bike man. How much I, how much I charge for four hours? I'll just pay him street hand. And then I wanted to buy suya. The guy was like, I'm just like, oh, yeah, come, man, buy the suya for you. The guy collected the money. And he bought the suya. When the guy came back with suya of 1,000 there, I was like, after that, why you put money back suya for me? He said, no, this is, I want to suya with that. And I know if I do, I try to walk up to that guy myself. For that one, same one time. I was not asking him to be This is what I was asking him to be This guy, check with people, he said, Kai. I was not giving him the breakdown of how the market comes. That he's going to see profit now. That, how would he sell him something that's not going to see profit? So one of the basic issues we have, one of the basic issues that we have, is that when I was in school, I faced it. So the greed from traders alone, the greed of traders is one of the things that have gotten us to this stage right in Nigeria. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. You can't, you can't use a few, a few examples to, to generalize. For example, the things that push prices up, you have energy cost, and the cost of fuel and diesel has increased by almost a hundred percent in the past, let's say, ten months. As of May, the cost of a liter of diesel average cost was around like eight hundred and something naira. Now, I'm sorry, as you're speaking, please speak to it because you said it's increased over the past 10 months. But in the past 10 months, prices have not been stable. They have continued to rise. Yes, it has been increasing. Well, fuel price, no, fuel price has been relatively stable. That jump from May 29th, okay? Yeah. It hasn't gone more than 10 naira, uh, 15 naira in some places. Yeah. But prices of consumables in particular. You also, have, have, I've not finished. Yeah, so like that's- Like I said, energy so costs. Yeah. You also have to look at the exchange rate pass through. And even the CBN governor alluded to that, that mm. there's, a, there's a pass through from increase in exchange rates to inflation. There, there, there's a correlation because if you look at payers, things like egg, you wonder why the price of egg is increasing mm -hmm. or why the price of egg has increased. You have to know that Nigeria imports maize and maize is the primary product using the feed. feed for uh, chicken uh, for um, poultry, poultry, and all of that. So that also affects it when the exchange rate increases and perhaps some some form of uh, supply chain disruptions also have effects yeah. on uh, on prices. price of goods and all of that. Yeah. So I don't think it's it's if you say the traders are greedy, they, they, they just didn't start their greed today. That greed has always been there. If you say they are greedy, so why has, why have things be, not been increasing? Perhaps as of 2013, 14, we had single digit inflation. So why did it go to double digit inflation? Uh, it's just generally the economy and they adjusting to the economy. People will not just, in fact, 
increase in uh increasing uh price of uh commodities affect the traders because people don't buy as much as they used to buy working capital yes people don't buy. i i i remember uh the 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 general manager of i think nigerian breweries was complaining that people can no longer afford a bottle of good beer because it has increased so people just prefer to drink water go home and sleep rather than on friday yes. evening go to the bar because it's expensive you can't money you used to buy a beer or uh, two bottles of beer you can't pull it together and and cook soup for your family. So <laughs> people look at the comparison. Should I drink a bottle of beer or should I take off <laughs> soup for my family? So that's, that's, that's the thing. It affects the traders. They are not happy that things are increasing. So I don't think it's greed. If you say I, it is greed, they just didn't become greedy in the past I few months. Not see. You say they have always been greedy. Why did this issue, why did things not increase significantly with that greed? Yeah, yeah. We are not talking about all traders. One. Two. I um when we begin to speak of greed, normally when things increases, I, I was saying it here. When now when I want to take back, please I take back for 200 before. If back man is telling me 350, I don't argue. Why? Because I check the Fred is buying, I check all that things he's doing. But if Fred will increase from 400 to 550, and a bike man that is taking me for 200, now he raises my bike money from 200 to 500. There's something. So why am I what I meant about the greed is now. There is, there should be a ratio of increase. Okay, what I'm buying is increasing. This is increasing. This is increasing. Okay, let me put to be with sincerity. If I add 20 naira to this commodity, it is enough. But our traders now look at that um, inflation as an avenue to make more profit. Let me give you an example. Doing fuel pump price, you hear federal government say, oh, fuel pump price is, let's say, 400. You get to filling station. They will tell you that before you enter, you pay 200 naira. At the, at the stand, before they sell fuel to you, you pay 500. The fuel that the government now call 400, they now sell it for you for 550. As at that point, when at, at the stable price of 400, everybody has agreed, okay, yes, this is the increase. But what of the 200, the 500, 200 they are paying? It's from who? In, that, from case, in that case, you should report to the regulatory authorities that you are, you are being extorted. <laughs> 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 I want to report that to you. I want yes, to that, 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 that's that's it. That's it. That's it. I want to report that to I think let's, be, let's bear something, let's bear something in mind. Just the way consumers have expressed concern, I think it's sad that vendors are themselves not expressing enough concern over the rising costs. No, they, they are. Of they are. Not just to express, but also to come together and see what they can do. Let's step back a bit. ShopRite yeah. popped into Nigeria. They set up these retail stores. Huh. And the model was very simple. You, ShopRite, have one central purchasing location for all the outlets all over the country. Yeah. So they buy bulk yeah. over that's wide retail space so that their prices can be low. Yeah. Their aim is to give you the lowest price available for that product in the yeah. market. Yeah. So two things happened to them in Nigeria. First was that they realized it was difficult to do that. Yeah. And secondly, once the exchange rate started to show signs of moving, um, and that was still with the, at PMB's time, yeah. they sh chose to leave the country yeah. because Transferring money back to SA it becomes was difficult. difficult and it was lower despite yeah. the higher volumes yeah. here. For companies that don't know what else to do, they've had to fold up um, and we've heard of companies shutting down outlets to drop costs. So that tells you when a vendor says there's something wrong in the system. And I think mm -hmm. it's important people start to look at the supply chain how goods get to that place. He was saying something. Now, that's when I was reminded of this. To enter a filling station, you pay this, you pay that. Those market systems where those things are sold, when yeah. these trucks come yeah. in, yeah. there is a, I don't want to use the word mafia, but I, I, I can't think of a better word to use right now. A cartel where or something. A, more like a cartel where it's certain prices must be paid yeah. so that the trucks can be offloaded and those bulk goods can be distributed to the people who are going to sell it. Okay. I, I, and, and, and those things play a role. And you guess what? Because they have told themselves that price of other things are going up and they want to afford it. So they've increased their own price. Yeah. And if each of us starts increasing our own price, where are we going to stop? It's just a reaction to the market. They're just reacting to the market. If the prices, if the cost of producing goods increases, the price good. of the price 
of the final product will, will definitely increase. It's a simple so, law so, so, of so trade and I, economics. I, I, I think I disagree with you a little bit. Yes, is that they've always been greedy. But the truth is that people have always been able to afford those things. I expect that, yes, for goods that are luxury, you can you can try to fix your price. You can you can look at me and see and sign up here. This guy should afford thing. Let me charge him thing. Yeah. But this guy cannot. Let me say I need to pay. Like, like, like I said, the guy who walked in the 5K yeah. and all that. So, but those are for luxury goods. But this is all, these are shirts. Are they, are they luxury goods? No. So, so what has actually come in now is that people have become more dishonest. That's why they can't. I wanted to fix a car of mine and then I took it for, I took it for repair. And the, and the guy said, the steering is bad. I have to change, change some, some there. It will cost me 5K. I said, okay, I'll, I'll let me go and let me try and raise money and come back. So I went somewhere to do something on my exhaust. And, the guy, and someone was trying to raise it up and said, ah, it's just a pipe. Oh. The pipe is 3K. And I was like, are you for it? 3K, 5 k Let me just try it. And the guy did it for me for 3,000. He bought a pipe for me. So the hose, 3K. It's been, it's been like three weeks now. My, my, my oil has remained at this point. And I was trying to ask myself, 5K to 3K. This is my old mechanic. Old mechanic that I've been using that I feel anything, anything he gives me, I just, I, I just pay. Oh, so I, the dishonest has talking. come in. I was and that's thinking. why the grid comes in. So because it wants also meet up somewhere. And, and, and like I said, if you are beginning to increase, you increase, you increase, you increase. Where would you, where are going to get to? That's what's affecting us. Okay. I know what you're saying. I'm, I'm not talking from the point of buyers now. I'm talking from the point of sellers. I've been close to sellers. And I'm talking from that perspective. I have women in my areas that when, when I get there, when I want to buy something, they will tell you that, you don't talk, don't talk, you just stay like this. I'm going to today. What that woman will sell for me for? 1,000 yeah. We tell them, ah, dollar new is 4,000 yeah. What? And, and should I tell you the fact is, should I tell you the fact is, hmm? the way that is affecting now, if normally they're supposed to make that price 1,000 yeah on a regular basis, they look at it that, so we will still come and buy it to 4,000 yeah. So why did that just increase this thing? And this is the issue. Before they are greedy sellers, yes. But now, we now have more greedy, greedy sellers. sellers. Before everybody's profit, everybody has actually timed their profit. Okay, this profit, this profit, I know that this profit is just enough for me and my family to eat. But now everybody wants to make ends from every little that comes away. Well, yes. because the average mm-hmm. trader, if, if someone sells Gary, for example, that person usually has to pay school fees. He has to pay, uh, he has to buy rice. Yeah, he has to pay rent and all that. And if those things increase, that person will also have to increase his margin, not just his price, his margin, his profit margin. So for, for example, if he's making 10 hours for every cup of Gary, for every cup of Gary sales, he wants to make it like 15, 20 naira because he understands that if he leaves that Gary and goes to buy something else or goes to pay rent, it has increased. Why that 10 naira can't be able to meet his needs perhaps 10 months ago? He will look at that 10, 10 naira cannot meet his needs now. It's not about just the prices in terms of cost. It's about the profit for the person and the profit margin because that, that particular trader has um, responsibilities yeah, us elsewhere. So why should you, <laughs> you, send, me. Why why is, why should you send me saying Gary to me at 10 naira, to him at 15 naira, if you're not greedy? Well, see, <laughs> the, the, the Nigerian economy is, is not, is not okay, regulated. Currency speculators are the cause of economic problems. If you agree with this prompt, please step forward. Um... Right. Currency speculators, economic problems. Very interesting. I never imagined that we would have a, we would have currency speculators being the cause of the economic problems. Now, I was rather surprised, I would admit, when the news came out about Binance and what was happening in the currency market in Nigeria and how the Naira fell. And I thought that's very strange, but something happened. Once Binance was shut down and it was closed, the Naira started to appreciate. The gains the Naira made, everybody sort of applauded it and said, oh, finally, we've, we've done something good. But of recent, the Naira has started falling again. And there's been another currency exchange that has been identified. I, I, I thought Binance, well, how can Binance have such an effect? I researched Binance and found out the problems that the Binance exchange had caused in various countries, including the United States, and how they'd actually been banned in some countries and all. One thing is clear, the exchange itself may not be bad, but the speculatory activities going on there without any regulation, without any form will cause, and then depending on the volumes, will cause significant and mass distortion in any economy. When we begin to go into cryptocurrency, the Binance itself, on a normal ground, people that trade before now, 
let me talk of maybe six, seven years ago, they are financial people. Mm. They understand the market movement, the um mm. the duties based on risk management. Yeah. There's a there's a principle. I was talking to somebody that the first market is being controlled by almost all those central bank in the world. The effect the first market is going to have on the economy may be a little bit low. But the effect Binance is having on the economy is so much. Why? Because People that are now coming to people don't people are coming to the Binance markets not because they want to make some kind of financial arrangement. We now have gamblers in the Binance market, and there's something about this is it has to do with demand and the supply. Right. So when I was I was reading about a guy that maybe made maybe made um, because I tell people that your money the profit is not coming from anywhere. You are making some people's money. Your people are losing their money to you. They said the guy just bought something about billions of naira from the Binance and the guy eats almost everybody's stop loss. And there's something about Nigeria's economy. Nigeria's economy is so porous. The regulation around it is not effective enough. Like if you get to the United States now, they can tell the amount of dollars they have outside. But now, can you say the amount of naira they have outside? No. Mm -hmm. those, those speculators, have, they, they actually have negative effect because they are not they are doing things based on the regulation. They are just, you know, I want to make profit. I want to make profit. Would the disagreements be step forward? What an interesting, interesting prompt. I think I would have loved you to rephrase that that prompt because what it sounds like is like um, they are the only ones responsible for what is happening, right? Because they are not the only ones responsible for it. Yeah, they're not. Agreed. So the issue we have in Nigeria presently about foreign forex is is structural. Crypto, crypto is everywhere. I mean, not not just Nigeria. So why is ours different? I mean, recently we we're all happy with what is happening. Dollar was going down. I mean, I was appreciating, and suddenly it's going up again. Oh, is it crypto? Is it is crypto has been there all the while? So if we do not take out or uh, sort the issues between that demand and supply, that structural issue, we're not going to achieve any anything. So I mean, I'm sure we've all watched this um, this video the, um, between this these two comedians. He was trying, well, he was trying to buy dollar, and then the guy was the guy said, okay, he was trying to sell dollar to him, and then suddenly he said, okay, wait, wait, if his phone rang. And it was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, the price has changed. You know, and then the last time the guy said, if you pick that call, <laughs> nice. I will slap you. Don't pick it. <laughs> so it's about it's, it's, it's speculative, right? right? But it's not just there. I don't think why they should why should they be blaming Binance? Because if you look, the biggest, the people that made the biggest uh returns from uh foreign exchange revaluation gains are Nigerian banks. Nigerian banks in the half year 2023, the first six months, major Nigerian banks made around 1.7 trillion. And uh, foreign exchange revaluation re gains. I don't think uh, Binance traders and Binance might make might make up to that because people are buying, buying, selling, buying, selling, See, buying, selling. These I issues have been issues that have been on ground since. No, wait. No, let's be sincere. No, when no. it comes to let's be, wait. Let's okay. be sincere. When it comes to the effectiveness of when it comes to the production of buying and all these things. Now, one particular thing we are actually looking at this angle. Nigerian problem is just just one. We are, actually, we are actually looking at the angle of these speculators, and I can't lie to you. <laughs> we cannot shy away from them. Let me give an instance. I trade Forex almost every day. At least if I'm not trading, I'm always on that market analyzing. Now, you should understand this, this currency, it has to do with the demand and the supply. supply. When you are demanding for something so much that the supply is not coming on. Now, what you are using as an exchange for what you are demanding, what will happen to it? You depreciate. Yeah. Now, what, what has caused the, that great effect before was because before now, the demand and supply is not this much. The, let me say the demand for dollar is not this much. Everybody that just demanding that maybe they want to buy goods, somebody want to pay school fees in, so, so. But now, a 14 years old boy in this corner of his room can pick up his phone and say, okay, I want to buy, I want to buy dollar with a certain amount of naira. So the pressure on, the on, on that naira is too much. Now, what everybody, almost everybody now, Oh, this guy make thirty seven thousand dollars from crypto so so yeah. This guy makes so so. There was a guy that was even coming to me that was saying, Joe, I heard you trade. Let me give you two thousand dollars. And in one week, I want to make that some thousand dollars. I was like, I'm not I'm not a gambler. I'm not a bad So So when, when we begin to speak of speculating now, so many people, so many people are in fact the rate at which the population of people that are going into crypto, the pressure we are putting on that currency is too much. Yeah. And that's that will definitely affect. Great. You see, let me let me say this, and I, I, I hear you, and it's true that there are other factors affecting yeah. the Naira and the exchange rates. But like you just said, let's look at that aspect of speculators. It was it it was particularly significant, and that is why, like I said, once that Binance thing was shut down, mm -hmm. zoom, it started coming down. 
But he pointed out to something very important, which we shouldn't lose sight of. Initially, what is the Binance thing we're talking about? It's an exchange. What's an exchange? We're, we're exchanging words right now. This yeah. is a platform for us. We're exchanging words, okay? It's simply there a platform. Some people are buying, some people are selling. But you see, when it's an online platform like that, I can actually be both buyer and seller. Am I right? <laughs> okay, I can be both. So I can demand and also pretend as if I have to sell and create a situation where my demand exists, my supply. Therefore, I increase my price in a bid to entice suppliers to sell to me. Now, where I'm going is that he also said something. You had orderly people who were trained, who were bankers, who understood markets and how to analyze them and all. But then you then had speculators who came in there to gamble and to make whatever money. So you had people in there whose aim was to make money because I alone can create those two accounts if I'm a speculator. And why would I do that? So that the dollar holding I have can increase in value when I decide to exchange it. Like you said about that joke, the way the price was changing every day, within a day, three times it was going. That's because the online market was real. The pressure on the online market and was we could easily, he, we could we, Both of us could be in the same room and I'm demanding and he's saying he's a supplier and we could drive up the price simply because we agreed to do so. Why? So that at the close of the market, we can make a good margin. We need to make sure we have laws, yes. you know, around this area. And, and I feel that Nigeria may have been a bit slow in putting regulation in place ar specifically around that. Um, but they were still able to find certain laws that were broken. Yeah. I, I, I think currency trading is not even a crime. It's not like yeah, we're we're really not that you are innocent until Antico proven, guilty. proven guilty. And it should be seen to be fair. But again, like I said before, I did some research on Binance. In some countries, there were fines. They paid a significant fine in America, yeah, more than they're being asked to pay here. Yeah. You know, um, because they broke the laws, and because, because there, the was, there was there was a law. So those laws, 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 those laws also exist here. Because you see, and and this Maybe is a funny. Sure. No, 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 no. This is a funny thing that has <laughs> happened that we we, we don't realize. Um, and I think it was during the last administration that we started to realize it. You and I easily think that once I go online, I can do business with somebody in Benin Republic. I don't need to obey laws in Benin yes. Republic. Yeah. But there is a level at which that business would reach and the turnover that I'll be making from that country, whereby law I'm supposed to register and be paying tax to yes. that okay. company, country. country. Every country has that. Because otherwise, you know, what will happen? I'll just say I'm floating in the air now, making money here and there. And that's how they because, tie them down okay, in okay. the U.S. Going and those laws also exist. Yeah. Going by that analogy, I think we shouldn't be looking at only buyers. Of course not. Because they are not the only ones no, making no, no, money. No, 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 no. It's just, we should also it's be looking at other industries. Yeah. For example, mm -hmm. Netflix also... Oh, that came, that came up during... Uh, um, we have uh, Facebook also have... Uh, uh, yeah, but that's, that's, but that, have, recall that, that, that came up at the last... It came up at the last administration yes. when Twitter was banned. Yes. They now yes. brought awesome. up that thing and yeah. said for all of them. You know, it's 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 up now. Right, let me give you an you example. Know? In in Forex now, like in the Forex market itself, when we have brokers, now when I go online to my brokers, there are so many brokers that I cannot actually use based on the regulations. Like let me, I I I I trade on Derive. Now Derive was banned in so many countries. Why? Because of the regulation that was given to them by those countries, they cannot actually abide by it. Now, when I'm trading on my broker, there must there are some certain font that I must put my tax yeah. some, something on yeah. that before tax. I can. There's some if I trade, if I trade at some certain level, there are some money I can take out. Yeah. But when you come to Binance, when you come to Binance, all these regulations. Are lacking. No, I, now, I disagree. No, wait, let me let me learn. So this is what I'm doing. So I'm not I'm not saying anybody should be jailed. No, nobody should be jailed. But this is it. Let there be regulations. Binance, if you are coming to Nigeria, there are regulations in Nigeria. And it's not only Binance, by the way. It's just that we're using them as an yes, example. Okay. Okay. But I think Binance as a know? platform did not commit. But I think the people who speculated on Binance. No, this is it. This is what we are saying. Binance did not guide them. You know, that's why Binance is being at fault. 
And again, there are rules where it's supposed it is supposed to have incorporated yes. in Nigeria and therefore abide by Nigerian regulatory rules. Okay. Had it done so, those people would not have loosely been trading on its platform without being subjected to regulation. Because speculators keep using different platforms. Like I said, there's one called Bybit that's in use right now. I know there's so many. Coin yeah, coin and exactly. So once I, once I saw, but you know, Nigerians tend to move together. There is a mass movement to Bybit in particular. So it's come up. And what you're going to find, unfortunately, is that you're going to find that even the proper ones, there's first of all going to be a shutdown before they now start sifting and saying, okay, this should do it, this should do it, this should do it. Sadly, that's, that may be what happens. In a country, in any system that doesn't have rules and regulation, the system will crumble. And that's what has happened to our era. Mm. Because when first has been existing for too long, for the first has been existing for too long, the, I'm talking about the <coughs> normal first mm. market, and I've not seen this big effect on economics based on Forex. Why? Because they are what? They are regulations. Now, one of the particular reasons why the speculating, the binance and everything has actually affected us because there were no proper regulations. So I'm not saying binance should be stopped. This is my own point of view. Binance should be regulated. There should be amount of what you can buy. There should be amount of what you can sell per day.